Hey, let's review how to add fractions. Um, hopefully this is something you already know how to do. Hopefully you find this to be a relatively easier homework. I figured I'd give you an easier one since you have a quiz this week um, and we're sort of between modules. Uh, this is a good thing to review because we're gonna be doing a lot of this in the upcoming module, but with positives and negatives. So um, let's just review how to do it with positives. When you wanna add two fractions, you need this should be a uh, review, common denominator. Denominator. That means that the bottom number in the fraction, this five and this three, they need to be the same. Why is that? Well, because the bottom of the fraction essentially tells you how big of a piece of something you have. You have fifths here and you have thirds here. And you can't just add fifths and thirds and get eighths. The world doesn't work like that. If it did, then, uh, I don't know, what if you had a half and you wanted to add another half? I think we all know that that should equal one or one whole. But if you added the pieces, like so what I'm showing you right now is wrong, just in case you're confused. If I just added the top, one plus one is two, and the bottom, two plus two is four, you'd get two fourths. That's literally the same as a half. And we all know that a half plus a half doesn't equal a half. So you can't add the denominators. It, it doesn't work. It changes the size of the pieces you have. And I don't know, that would be like, I don't know, adding two $1 bills and two $5 bills and saying you have four $6 bills or something. It doesn't, it doesn't work that way. So instead, we have to write equivalent fractions to the ones we're trying to add. Um, but they have to have the same number at the on the bottom. So we have to figure out a way to change the fractions so that they have common denominators. Here's the way I do it. I like to just make two new fraction bars because I know I'm gonna write two new fractions and since I'm adding them, I put my plus sign between. Then I look at the two denominators I currently have, five and three. And I think to myself, I know I'm gonna to need to multiply or divide the top and bottom of these fractions by something in order to change them. And so I'm thinking of multiples of three and multiples of five. And what I'm looking for is a number that is both a multiple of three and a multiple of five. The easiest way to get that number is to just multiply three times five and then whatever number you get the product kind of by definition has to be a multiple of three and a multiple of five. Sometimes you can find an easier number to work with than doing it that way. Um, so what I like to do to kind of see if there's better numbers along the way is to pick the smaller number and then count by it until I get to a number that I know is also a multiple of the bigger number. So in this case, I would go three, six, nine. None of those numbers I've said so far are a multiple of five. 12, still not a multiple of five. 15, that is a multiple of five. I would have got this same number if I just did five times three, but I don't know, I wanted to do my little process. And so now what I do is I think, okay, I gotta make an equivalent fraction to four fifths, and it has to have a denominator of 15, and I need an equivalent fraction to two thirds with a denominator of 15. And the way I do it is I multiply the top and bottom of the fraction by the same number. Well, here, I already multiplied by three. Five times three got me this 15. And so on the top, I do the same thing. Four times three equals 12. And then the other fraction, I'm gonna do the same thing. So this arrow is gonna get a little messy here, but this arrow is going to this 15. And what I did was three times five equals 15. So that means I have to do the same thing to the top of this fraction. I have to multiply it by five. Two times five is 10. Now I have two equivalent fractions to the ones I started with, but they both have denominator 15. And so I can add them 12 plus 10 is 22. I don't add the denominators. That just tells me how big the size of my pieces are. I don't need to change that as I go. So I have 22 fifteenths, and I could just leave my answer as that. We could, we could simplify it if it simplified. I don't, I don't think this does. Um, we could write it as a mixed number, but I don't really care to do that right now. So I'm gonna leave my answer as is. I'm gonna go through doing the, the rest of the odds. I'll do three, five, seven, and nine. I will leave the evens for you to do. I'm gonna draw these arrows to sort of help display what I'm doing. I don't know necessarily that you need to draw those. It might make your work messy if you try to draw all this. I don't know, it's up to you. All right, so 
I start by writing two new fraction bars. I put my plus sign between. Then I think I, I need a multiple of two and a multiple of five. Let me just count by twos. Two, four, six, eight, ten. That's the first number I've got to that's a multiple of five. So I'm going to go with that. I could have also just got that by doing two times five. Then I see that to go from two to 10, I'm multiplying by five. So on the top of this fraction, I need to do the same thing. I need to do one times five, which is five. And then on the other fraction, to go from five to 10, I'm multiplying by two. So that means I need to multiply by two on the top of the fraction and two times two is four. So I'm doing five tenths plus four tenths, that is nine tenths. All right, let's go on to number five. Let's see, can you still see me on the screen? Yep. I'm gonna start by drawing two new fraction bars, putting my plus sign between, and then I'm looking for a number that is both a multiple of 10 and three. I could count by threes, but I can kind of see that that's gonna take me a while on this one. I know that all the multiples of 10 are the numbers that end in zero, like 10, 20, 30, 40. So all I gotta do is think of which one of those numbers is also divisible by three. Well, 10's not, 20's not, but 30 certainly is, and that's also three times 10. So most of these are working out to where like the best number to use is just, you know, what you get when you multiply the two denominators. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna use a denominator of 30 for both of these. And I'm gonna think, what do I multiply 10 by to get 30? Well, it's three. So that means I gotta do the same thing to the top of the fraction over here. I'm gonna do six times three, which is 18. And then what do I multiply three by to get this 30? Well, it's 10. So that means I gotta multiply this one also by 10. One times 10 is 10. So I'm doing 18 thirtieths plus 10 thirtieths. That is 28 thirtieths. And with this one, I noticed that both numbers are even. 28 and 30 are both even. And so I can divide the top and bottom by two, or divide it by two over two if you prefer to say it that way. And I get 14 fifteenths. And I think that's gonna be my final answer on that one. Uh, all right, so let's see here. You can still see seven on the screen, yep. All right, so I got denominators of three and two. By now I'm getting kind of good at this. I think I can see that the common denominator I want is gonna be six. So let me build my two new fractions and my plus sign. I'm gonna put sixes on the bottom here. And I think, okay, to go from three to six, I gotta multiply by two. So that means I gotta do the same thing to the top of this fraction. I'm gonna multiply this two by two, I get four. And then to go from two to six, I'm multiplying by three. So that means I gotta take the top of this fraction and multiply by three as well. I get three six. I'm adding four six plus three six, that is seven six. And we could write that as the mixed number one and one six if we wanted to, but not worried about it. All right, uh, the last one, number nine. So this is the first one where one of the denominators is a multiple of the other one. Like four is a multiple of two, because if you start counting by twos, you get to four really quick, obviously, two, four. So that means we can use this number, four, as our common denominator. These are actually the easiest ones. So I put a four here and a four here. The second fraction isn't gonna change. It has four on the bottom here, four on the bottom here. So three on the top here, three on the top here. These ones are the easiest because you only have to do like half the work. And so here to go from two to four, I'm multiplying by two. So on top, I will also multiply by two. One times two is two. So I'm adding two fourths and three fourths, that is five fourths. All right, I did the odds, you do the evens.